Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Miraculous Being series. Today, I have a special guest with us joining in. Thank you so much, Rocky, for coming on board. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much for doing this and inviting me. And uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, let's have some great conversation about yoga. And that's how I think we connected also because of the yoga. So let's see. Yes. yes, I'm so glad that we actually got a chance to meet. So I met Rocky in a restorative yoga workshop that she conducted in Bandra. And uh, I, feel, I felt like 10 years lighter at the end of those two hours session. And uh, I immediately knew that I had to get her on board here. So really, really grateful and really thankful to have experienced that uh, from you. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much. First of all, I would say that you never knew, you didn't know me before you came for the workshop. So I think, thank you so much for that trust that you just came for the workshop. And I'm glad that you had a good experience. And that was the intent. Uh, that was the intent that whoever comes there feels lighter, feels yeah. easier and feels easy on themselves. That's what we are not doing in today's world. We are just hard on ourselves in every single thing we do. And every single day we are doing things. So the idea was to really give you a lot of relaxation and ease and comfort and lighter feeling. And I'm glad that happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I already have so many questions. But before we go in, maybe you can introduce yourself to the audience so that they know your story and who you are. Okay. So my name is Rakhi. And uh, um, I think I always loved uh, being fit. The reason is that when I was growing up, I was always sick. Uh, something or the other my metabolism was always very low six seven seven and a half that was my metabolism and I was always put on some kind of syrup or some kind of supplement to keep me going because my skin color used to be pale my eyes used to be pale and uh, everybody used to refer to me as bechari she is so weak and I used to be very thin and very weak and and that's the reason I think when I came in college I took the matters in my hands at the same time I used to have severe menstrual cycle issues in terms that sometimes I wouldn't get my periods for two months sometimes for 20 days I would be bleeding and there used to be so much of pain for three years of my life when I started getting my periods I was in 10th standard 9th or 10th and till I came in college uh, for another one two years because you are in college and you really start going out with friends and you're eating anything and that's the time you don't look after yourself you're so much in the external world i used to i used to go through severe pain excruciating pain i used to lie down for five days just like that and i just want, didn't want to get up i and there were no there was no hot water bag concept at that time and i was growing up in our families it was very hidden you know you can't walk in front of your fathers your brothers your mother is asking you to all the time keep it hidden don't show it on your face so after going through all of that i didn't know that exercising would help it it happened to me by fluke because i used to be uh, i used to be interested in dancing and I was learning dance at the Shamak Davos Institute and that's the time my brother uh, told me to get into fitness he said you are already good with dancing and rhythm why don't you get into aerobics and all one of his friends suggested it and when I got into it I realized that it was helping me a little the movement helped me a little but my problem didn't completely go away at that time so I think a couple of years I remained in fitness industry and, and then I changed my industry. I got into acting, media, and then a couple of years I was into that. But I always had this very love and hate on and off relationship with my periods. Sometimes I was okay and sometimes I was just not okay. Then I shifted my city from Delhi, I came to Bombay. And it kept going on and on and on all my life. And then... By chance, uh, by God's grace, I would say, and I think my destiny brought me to yoga and I think the destiny brought yoga in my life. Uh, it was the darkest phase of my life when I got into yoga. And now since then, I don't remember when was the last time I actually had the period pain or the discomfort. And along with yoga, when I, when I got into Ayurveda a year and a half, a year back, and now I can... I can actually vouch for it and I want to tell at least women that you know what 
take it up because this is going to really help you because we go through every month with something or the other so um journey of yoga actually started um when i was not feeling great about my life and i was in depression severe anxieties i used to i never attempted to kill myself but i used to get the thoughts what if i just jump off the 18th floor or what if if i'm standing in the kitchen i used to feel what if what if i just slit my wrist okay the story is over right and getting a thought like that is also not a great space you are in so that's the time when i was on the verge of completely giving up when i had put on so much of weight i didn't know what to do i was dealing with knee injuries anxiety depression weight gain wrist injuries a lot of issues ut- uterus uh, infection that was the time when my younger brother told me why don't you go to yoga why don't you just go and become a yoga teacher and you already have the background of fitness so i'm a certified fitness instructor and i've done many many things like i've been trained as a zumba instructor masala bhangra uh, reebok certified trainer i've been a strat pilates trainer after all of that I don't know why nothing actually worked for me that much uh because whatever it is the work was happening externally on the physical body but internally maybe nothing happened and maybe I was too stressed in my life because a lot happened in my life till then and then I was like who does yoga it's only stretching and I never believed in it but then he told me one thing that do you have any other option i said no he said it's a very respected field why don't you get into it why don't you just give it a chance and uh, it was 2017 i just went to the yoga institute stayed there for 3 months and within 3 months i knew i found something i didn't know what it was i was new to it because when you are a new practitioner you are only and only about physical practices you only want to do them but even they helped me a lot and i knew that i'd found something i wanted to work with deeper and when i started working with the deeper it really started helping me it it started changing me my ideology my attitude my thought process from the very core and that was the best thing a girl who used to say that nothing can ever change me here i was ready to change i wanted to change and i wanted to work towards it so i think that's how it happened and when i started seeing things changing for me and my when my life started becoming better when i started getting the confidence i was like i need to teach it and i need to reach it out to more people and that's how this entire journey to be a practitioner and to be a teacher started wow so 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 beautiful and powerful and thank you for being so honest and vulnerable in sharing uh, really grateful that you could open up and i think um, I, it's always interesting for me how people find yoga or ha- rather how mm-hmm. yoga finds people it's uh, there's always a story <laughs> there's always <laughs> a story right uh, so uh, you know the the question that probably comes to my mind is uh, how has your journey been from being the fitness instructor or a zumba instructor from the fast paced to moving into a yoga as a yoga instructor how has that journey been okay so uh, basically i was working already so if i start from the beginning i was working in delhi then i wanted to get into media so i quit everything and i came to bombay and then i got into media for some time then i got into acting and things didn't work out that well as in i just felt empty from within i felt it's not serving me so something somebody told me you're already a fitness instructor why don't you get back to it so again just by chance just because my life was just not happening i got back to fitness and then you have to survive so kanti i loved dancing i loved teaching and uh, people thought that i was good with that good energy i had so i continued doing couple of courses and i continued teaching so it was 2014 2015 when i was working as a full time group exercise instructor taking almost eight classes a day running here and there and doing a lot of high impact work and that was a time when i was being diagnosed i started limping all of a sudden imagine i'm a high impact uh, group exercise instructor and i started limping my knee started hurting 
all the time so i would enter i i would enter my class limping and that didn't help me i would do icing before my class and my knees to take the class then i went to uh, an orthopedic and he told me that 40% cartilage from your knees is gone and you didn't realize it because you were just living a very fast paced life i said you have to stop working right now otherwise you'll never be able to dance or leave dancing you'll never be able to walk that well in your life if you leave if you uh, if it's gone completely if the cartilage is injured completely so then another 3 months i continued to, uh, working like that but then i had to stop working because of these issues then from 2015 to 2017 i didn't work i was just taking one or two personal training classes and i continued learning i continued doing couple of courses like nutrition course if nothing if not this that i can at least sit and do this but that put me into a lot of stress and depression because dancing was my love i always thought that dancing was the first love of my life and i wanted to dance i th- i thought i was born to dance and 2017 uh, when there was no other option for me i went to yoga so transition had already happened because i had already stopped doing things right i had already stopped doing those fast paced uh movements exercises or the fitness routines and i was so depressed in my life that nothing was helping me at the time you will not believe there was this one time i didn't step out of my house for 7 days i didn't even open the windows i didn't take shower i was just in such a rut and that's the time i had to call up a psychologist that i was like at least have to get out of this first and then when i got into yoga uh i'll tell you something about yoga when you just get into yoga na even the teachers who are teaching you they all make you do the fast paced processes so it was not that difficult okay but yes one thing which was very very difficult for me to do was sit and pranayam it was very difficult because as a person who has lived such a fast paced life sitting and doing pranayam was very very difficult you know focusing on your breath doing it slow so i never did pranayam for first two years of my practice i only and only did physical practices and a lot and i pushed myself so much into it uh because in the yoga institute also we were taught traditional yoga to become the yoga teacher so that became very confusing at the same time and you have to figure out your own uh kind of stream but we were being taught vinyasa now vinyasa is an extremely challenging form of fitness of yoga so when we were doing vinyasa i pushed myself so much into it that i was sore all the time so i think transition came from my own experience my own experience of not feeling feeling good for 3 months when i was doing traditional yoga and a little bit of all these things then practicing on my own to really when you are a new yoga teacher and i started my yoga journey when i was 34 with injured body with tight body so i had to work all the more hard because aapko ye bhi dikhana na that you can do all of that you can do a split you can do a headstand you can do a handstand then only uh you are recognized as a good yoga teacher and then only students come to you so i was pushing myself too hard into it and i kept realizing that no there's something missing i was also teaching vinyasa imagine i kept feeling after one hour what am i giving my student the questioning started coming and i think that's the best part about this practice even if you do it wrong na sometimes the physical practice start if you are really inclined towards getting into it deeper i think the practice worked for me rather than i worked towards it because i started having questions i started having questions why why are we doing yoga we can do any other fitness program also i could have actually gotten better with any other rehab program also i could have gone to a good psychologist to get better with anxiety depression why if i'm doing yoga then why are we doing yoga so this question kept coming to me every single day so the transition started happening within myself with these questions coming in with my body feeling sore all the time and i kept asking myself why am i sore all the time when i'm practicing why it's not giving me that nice bubbly feeling which i had for 3 months when i was in the yoga institute 
And from there, the entire transition from being so hardcore to becoming someone and to work towards the calmness and the overall well-being started. I think the transition happened because of my practice, which gave me so much of pain that I just wanted to that I just wanted to kind of what an cooperation karna kisi cheez ka. I wanted to understand it better. So then I started studying a lot. And then from there, this entire transition took place. So, so beautifully articulated. And and I'm curious, uh, did you find that answer uh, to why yes. yoga? Yes, yes. I found that answer because, see, we all are running towards something. We all are trying to achieve something. We all are running in a race, I would say. Either a race with our own selves or a race with others, right? Everybody, you will see nowadays this quote that don't compare yourself to other, be the better version of yourself. That is also the race. You're in that race with your own self, right? So we are living in a flight and fight mode all the time, all the time. We are always living at the edge, Huh? Ya to hame kisi se better banna hai, ya hame khud se better banna hai, right? Hame, we have to achieve and in today's world, especially with so many people getting into their own businesses and entrepreneurship, everybody wants to achieve something, right? Then a thought would always come to me, what about living? Are we really living? Are we really relishing whatever we are achieving? And from there, the answer was that why yoga in my life? Because I really want to relish. I really want to live. I really want to experience. And I really want to get to know myself. Because since childhood, I was a person who was very curious. I always had questions. And nobody could ever answer those questions for me. And I was getting my answers on my mat. When I would go on my mat to practice, when I was in a posture, some realization would happen. Or when I was practicing pranayam, something would strike, you know, something would happen. Or a meditation practice or a tratak. So every practice was leading me to a deeper connect with my own self. And this deeper connect, connect kept giving me that answer that I am practicing yoga because it is actually the path of self-realization. When I talk about self-realization, it's, and I'm still on the path. I think, I don't know whether I'll be ever enlightened in this lifetime or not, but I would love to be on this path because this path is anyways filled with a lot of liberation and freedom. You feel liberated from so many concepts and belief systems which are being instilled within yourself. And that is itself a very, uh, you know, pleasurable place, you can say. Okay. So for me, when I say self-realization, it is not that, oh, I like this. I like that. I'm a woman. I am this. Uh, you know, no. Self-realization is really, really understanding who you really are. And that has nothing to do with you being a woman or a man or a wife or a husband or a sister or a daughter or the roles we play or the belief system we have or the concepts we are carrying in today's world or the likes and dislikes we have or the lifestyle we lead it is actually beyond all of that and actually going beyond all of that is actually the path of liberation or enlightenment you can say so why yoga i can go for any other fitness program but Yoga really gives me that connect which I can feel within something myself. And that's why yoga. Absolutely. So, so, so profound. Uh, I think uh, I'm recollecting a conversation that I had uh, with a friend of mine and, you know, the same thing we were saying. And I said, uh, you know, yoga makes me feel whole. You know, I can't, I can't articulate <laughs> more than that. Because I, it's I would hard. love to know that actually more from you because... Uh, <laughs> Very few people actually say this because for them, yoga has become a means to stay fit and look a certain way. And nowadays it's face yoga and everything. But I want to know, since you said that, what what did make you say that? Well, I think, uh, you know what you said, right? Uh, 
in every identity or role that we take up in our lives uh, you know there is a part of us that does that and you know we can function decently well you know as a wife as a student as an employee as a leader as a team everything right you but i still felt like you know they were all still roles that was not all of me all of me was in the mat you know when i would vibrate and there was it was not because i was doing something it is just who i am you know that wholeness is something i'm still trying to bring to these identities because what we do in real life is that you know we kind of cut off you know yoga is on the mat and when we come back you know shweta the boss shweta the leader shweta the yelling wife right so how do we really bring that wholeness off the mat is something i'm still working on but i think i've experienced uh that sensation of uh, not being bound by any limitations of identity roles labels whatever you want to call it and i guess that's what made me say that nice i li- i like what you use the word yoga off the mat and on the mat actually you know because uh, most of the time are actually people are actually practicing yoga on the mat and a little off the mat but i would blame the yoga teachers for this and not the participants and not the students it is i think as teachers we need to take up this responsibility whatever is my ideology or my value system as a yoga first of all i also need to figure out my value system as a yoga teacher what is my value system is it to get 50 students to my class or is it to give best to those five students yeah is it only about i also have to understand the role of the asan practice as a yoga teacher in the whole sum i would say the process of life you yeah. know so uh, one yoga teacher has to be i think completely in contemplation mode a lot of times and uh, i i would blame as i said the teachers not the students because they don't know they are just coming to you so you teach them as per what re- their requirement what they want but also at the same time you take up the responsibility to make this practice profound and wholesome for them yeah and yeah. once in a while telling them that it's also about living it off the mat not only on the mat lekin unko pata hi nahi hai na what do they have to live off the mat <laughs> That's exactly no <laughs> what is it exactly what they have to live off the mat right yeah, yeah so absolutely so we have to also in our classes we have to design them in certain way that one of the other value we keep putting and we keep teaching them not only giving them the zero size figure or a great figure or a great physique or a glowing face and all of that i think we need to have the glowing core and the glowing centering and the glowing with from within then just yeah. glowing from outside that, yeah. that's has to yeah. be absolutely so one of our teachers uh, in kaivalya dham used to say that saying that you know yoga is not one hour in the morning yoga is 24 by 7 you know uh, it is it is very wrong to assume that you you know do surya namaskars on the mat every single morning and oh i'm enlightened right that, uh, that oh my god i think the conversation keep going because a lot of times uh, uh, i was telling ashi that we surely have to put this across to people through our post and through our work that uh, when you practice yoga it doesn't make you better than any anybody else when when a lot of people when they are practicing yoga inside of them they are mm. always thinking that they are better than others yeah you have killed the whole essence you have ruined it completely just by bringing that ego within yourself just because you practice aap apne liye kar rahe you're doing it for yourself absolutely when you do it for yourself how does it matter where you stand and where somebody else stands yeah that's the very true yeah. very true i think and also i think what i love about yoga is that it's a journey right it's not like you've unlocked and chala gaya wo you know one level you unlock level 3 level 4 you know it's like you keep crossing and the more of those insecurities and the limiting beliefs keep showing up and that probably poses a question that i have for you right uh, uh you have been a student of yoga and you know now you're practicing and teaching yoga uh, how do you make sure that you continue that learning process because i feel like somewhere we kind of cut off you know oh i know it all but how do you make sure that that learning continues through your life see first of all and i this is my advice to all the yoga teachers and practitioners also nobody ever becomes bigger than the yoga practice okay so you have to have that realization throughout that this practice is bigger than anybody else okay you are only a practitioner 
and the people those who wrote it having the respect towards those masters and sage patanjali and having the respect really from within and having that humility in your heart that i am practicing it and i can create a lot more but still those who have created something so beautiful and profound having the respect towards them uh, second thing what you have to do is the learning process it keeps going on because there'll always be something to learn i don't know it all i may know a lot but nobody ever knows it all by the way let me tell you this because they, every day is a new day and every day there's a new situation and a new person and you have to learn a new way of dealing with it right har matlab first of all understanding that life is ever changing the only thing which is constant is the change right we know it we know the saying and it is true things are never the same and things are never going to be the way they are it's always going to change now we never knew about covid there is covid right so to deal with covid you will have to learn new things you can't deal with covid the same way okay i may have anxiety somebody else has anxiety but that person's anxiety is different from me so i have to learn a new way to deal with that as a teacher or as a you know practitioner or something like that so first of all what i feel all the time that i don't know it all okay second thing i have a lot of respect towards this practice because i really keep it at that level in my life it's i always look up to yoga and i'm always like ki what a beautiful process which has been created what a profound process which has been created i may not connect to everything it's saying but yes i know that this is beautiful so having a lot of respect towards it and understanding and knowing that i'm not the best teacher out there i'm learning i'm learning in the process i'm learning new things and that's how you keep the learning process going every day you will not believe i'm still before this book i was still sitting with the book so <laughs> learning is something up it sharir can i speak in hindi once again yeah 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 absolutely ye jo sharir ek aisi cheez hai jo itna complex structure hai bade se bade scientist haven't figured it out yet completely by the way yeah yeah so there's so much to learn alone about this and then mind is another game all together by the way i'm not talking about the brain i'm yeah. talking about the mind the mind which has your thoughts your memories your perceptions how you take things your senses right yeah. so much we don't know it all and if we don't know it all how can i have the ego that i'm done <laughs> and i have to keep learning my yeah. mother tells me sometimes when will this process stop for you and i tell her never <laughs> absolutely there's just so much to go deep within yeah and how do you make time for learning probably that is the question i'll ask because we are all so busy so that is something very difficult but and earlier i used to get um, a little anxious or nervous or i would say a little agitated about it if i'm not getting the time to read and there was there was a long list mm. i would do this out so one day what i did i tore that list completely <laughs> i would like let it, let it become the part of my life let it become the part of the process i am not going to strain myself and keep having a long and usme add hi hota rehta na we keep adding <laughs> adding adding and only it's becoming bigger 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 so one day i was like i'm going to tear it off so i tore it off first of all <laughs> and second thing is like taking a, a taking maybe half an hour one hour out of the day and just i if if i pick up one book at least i'm trying to read one page every day i think i shared it with you before yeah. we started the podcast <laughs> that at least um, and another way to learn is maybe see you encounter a new condition or a new question so i encourage my students to ask me questions yeah when i run my instagram classes or when i run my online classes or my even my offline classes i ask them contemplate ask me why this it will also help me to learn and that's the way i've learned the most when they ask me a question if i know i give the answer if i do i tell them give me some time then i yeah. go i read about it i do my research i uh, try and read uh, different teachers and then that's how you learn something about something more you know 
So right. slow. I I think for every teacher, don't put a gun on your head. Even anybody who wants to learn along with the with with their with their work with their life, don't put a gun on your head. Don't think that you have to acquire all the knowledge. No, it's not important to acquire all the knowledge. It's important to use the knowledge whatever you have. If you're not using it and acquiring it, you are again um, doing accumulation, which is yeah. another yama <laughs> in the yeah. practice. So you're not doing that. Okay. Yeah. So little, 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 little. Dire, 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 dire. You keep growing. Love how we put that. <laughs> put the knowledge to use. Yeah. And um, I think this was one of the things that I saw on your Instagram feed at some point, you know, where you said, you know, stop doing this five asanas or this thing, that thing that uh, magically change your lifestyle. I would love for you to share more on that. Uh, what's the magic pill? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually tired of so many yoga teachers sharing one technique, this technique, that technique. I was so fed up. I said, Ashish, we have to do something about it. And I wanted to put it up there, right up front on your face that this is not how it's going to work. Like the other day, I was watching somebody teaching someone to lose belly fat with Setu Bandhasan, 20 times going up and down. And I want to ask people, I want to tell people, I want to give people a challenge. Do it every day. 20 times, you do 50 times. And if you lose weight, you come and tell me. I'll change my profession. It's not going to happen. So it's because asanas are not magic pill, by the way. Even the yoga practice, even Hat Yoga Pradipika is saying very clearly that a sadhak, a person who is into deep practices of yoga is called sadhak. That a sadhak has to obtain from all the worldly pleasure to get the benefit of the practice. So how do you think, how do you imagine that five asanas can give you the results? No, people have, I have women coming up with PCOS and they tell me I have PCOS and can you give me few asanas to deal with it? How can few asanas help you when your lifestyle has created this condition for you? You have to work on your lifestyle, right? So first of all, you have to work on your sleep. How much rested are you, right? Second thing, your nutrition. Are you really eating? Matlab, imagine you eat pizzas and burgers and then you go and sit in vajras and it's going to help you. It's not going to help at all. At all. Wishful thinking. <laughs> so people think you eat anything, you do overeating and you go and sit in vajras and I've seen people doing it. <laughs> That's why another post we had about Vajrasana that it's not a magic. Like, it's not a magic. It is not a goli nahi hai bhai. It is not a ajmola. So, this is not how it works. It's not how it works. It works when you are very, very disciplined. Yeah. When you want to take the matters in your hands and when you tell yourself that, you know what, enough is enough. I'm going to work on it because I want to lead a healthy lifestyle. Because I want to feel good in, within myself. You keep leading a bad lifestyle. You might have diseases. You might keep take, taking pills in your life. And then you might go one day from this world. And you will lead a good life. But when that pain occurs, no? when you have problems in your body, you can't concentrate. Yeah. You don't feel good. You have to understand that, right? Yeah. When anything is happening to your body, don't you, aren't you just put off completely so why are we doing this we are doing this so that we can do other things peacefully you are having PCOS right and you are not getting your periods for 3 months aren't you feeling heavy, suffocated disturbed then what do you want to do just work on your lifestyle so asanas work amazingly well with you only when you practice them the right way and the best way to practice asanas, which is also mentioned in Heart Yoga Pradipika, is that you hold an asana and you can breathe deeply into it. All the aspects are important. Endurance is important. Strength is important. Flexibility is important. Stamina is important. But, but always a yoga practitioner is doing all of that only and only to reach a state of Sthiram Sukham Asana. When you can do that, 
when you can do that physically then you can sit longer physically without getting disturbed and then you can practice more pranayam and that can help you to practice more meditation and that can help you to be really calm and stable and head towards the next realm of your life like next you can say phase right so this is very important to work on your lifestyle i guarantee you no five asanas can ever help you in a problem and if they help you in a problem just you following anything and practicing just those five asanas come tell me i'll change my profession right there and <laughs> i'm telling you i'm sure it won't come to that <laughs> But yeah, absolutely right. I think uh, we are always looking, and I think as a coach also, I see so much of that on my feed. You know, five hacks to change your life overnight and things like that. And you know, when people come to me and I'm like, "Are you ready to work hard? Like for six months to one year at least? <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't. It has to be consistent." But, right? you, आप मुझे common sense सोचके बताओ. Does it resonate? Does it work like that? Yes, you can. You can use those five asanas in your daily practice. Yeah. You can use of those five hacks in your daily practice. Like you can use Apan Mudra regularly, mm-hmm. daily. This can help you with the digestive issues. But along, but when you will eat your food in a nice way, chewing it completely, eating wholesome food, then no. Yeah. You eating. If you if we if we use our brain, no, we'll understand this. But you know why people are doing this five hours and hack and everything. because they also know that people just need that quick fix yeah that's it it's not their mistake it's not these teachers mistake it's yeah. it's people those who just don't want to work whole somebody yeah also you know why because the consciousness is not at that level so then all the more one should practice yoga see yeah. to lead a good lifestyle no you don't need rocket science you need consciousness you need awareness you need the realization and even if you are not there i would tell them start with the yoga practice yoga asana practice and it'll start giving you that perspective yeah so idhar se ki idhar se ki idhar se ki idhar se this is going to help you that's all i know <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i think it's just that it's just easy to do those five asanas right the path is very pleasant i'm i'm reminded of the whole concept of uh, vedanta right where they say shreyas and prayas right we want the path of pleasant you know so it's easy in the short run long term dekhenge tab jab aayega main bolti hu ye five asan bhi aapko help kar sakte hain but are you ready to repeat these five asan like one asan five times at least a minute of holding yeah Are you ready to do that, or you're just ready to do one asan, one asan, one asan, one asan, one asan? Yeah, five, 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 ten, ten seconds. See, it's not that these five asanas are not going to help you; they're going to yeah. help you. But if you practice them the right way with the right lifestyle, absolutely, that is what it all adds so, up, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> True. and what i also would wanted to speak with you about is i know you're very passionate about women's health specifically mental health and how yoga plays a great role in all of that right so what are your views on that and you know how can women proactively take care of their well being you know first of all i think for a woman to take care of her health and i've done a lot of n number of sessions only for women when i was conducting a lot of zoom sessions a lot of webinars for them and uh, they have to realize their presence first of all they have to realize that they matter okay uh it is a very natural instinct of a woman to not look after herself you know it could be because of conditioning it could be because of hormones and it could be because that we are nurturing in nature we are okay i'm not saying that men are not nurturing but a woman is a little more nurturing because of the entire female energy we have within ourselves our hormones play a big role in that so because of that whole instinct we anyways don't look after ourselves right uh, and women let's not only talk about the women in the cities women in the cities are doing great for themselves today okay but women if we talk about india especially women are 
a, a huge percentage is still living in small towns, remote areas, villages, right? And they are not looking after themselves. They don't even know that hormones exist. They don't even know that reproductive system ka kya process hota hai. So, first of all, women have to understand that it is very important to look after yourself. Second thing, how yoga can help. Yoga helps in two ways, especially for women. A lot of yoga postures really help us to work on our reproductive system by opening the pelvic floor, which is usually very constricted, which is taking the weight of the entire upper body. Okay, so including the postures which can really help you to open up the pelvic floor. Second thing, including inversions, really help, they really help you to take the blood flow to the uterus. Third thing, doing pranayam and mudras and meditations can really help them to calm down. Now, if your reproductive systems are, get, uh, your hormones, our ovaries are also glands, by the way. They are producing hormones, then the hormones getting produced from the pituitary gland, okay, from the thymus, thyroid gland right here. So the connection between all these hormones can be absolutely balanced if you're calm from here. Now, women, I think, are less calmer than men in today's world because of the roles we are playing. And it's great that we have come out and we have found our potential and we can play all these roles. And even let me tell you, I lived in a remote area for the first time after I got married last year and I saw women here. Oh my God, they work so much, I can't tell you. They, they are on the go all the time. They're multitasking all the time. And they don't know this. So when you're multitasking so much, your brain is all the time on the go. So what will happen with the help of the yoga practice if you just give every day 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour to yourself without thinking about anything else, you are actually calming your glands down. You're calming your nervous system down. Where's the pituitary gland? In the brain, right? Just below the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. So if your glands are functioning well, your hormones are functioning well, then you can deal with all your issues like mood swings, pains, aches. And there's so much is happening with a woman throughout the month, right? There's so many hormones playing the game here and there. Why not to do something which can really put you at ease? And this ease is very important, and especially in women's life today. Because a woman has to finish her work at office and she's in the train thinking, oh my God, what will I cook when I go back home? And then she just goes back home and she starts cooking, feeding everyone, cleaning, preparing for the next day. When is the time she's getting to sit by herself and take few breaths? So she's really stressed. When you go in the plane, what do they say? First wear your mask and then help somebody else. Exactly that's the thing here. First look after yourself and then somebody else. And with women, I've seen in today's world... Um, uh, there's extreme happening. When you are into fitness, when you're into this, into that, you start feeling that you're way too powerful and great. Nothing wrong in that. But they also don't want to rest when they're having their periods. And that's the worst thing they're doing to themselves. Yeah. You know, really not accepting the feminine energy within yourself. That let it work. So I would see, I, I see women like a pendulum play. Okay, and the balance can come with the practice. So the understanding of the body can come with that practice. Yeah. So all the yeah. women out there, <laughs> start practicing yoga. Think that you matter. Start looking after yourself. And it's okay to be vulnerable at times. And then when it's important to be strong, be strong. That's how it is. Absolutely. I think I think so powerful, right? Uh, and especially what you just lastly said, right? It, that it's okay to be feminine and accept your feminine aspect of it. Oh, I think especially for women in cities. Yeah, because for women in cities who are in floors where they are, you know, surrounded by men, you know, there's the need that you feel like, you know, you have to armor up and become one of them so that you belong. And I think it's beautiful to see that maybe you can, you know, accept and embrace the feminine aspect of you and still manage to 
whole ground and i think the other beautiful distinction you brought out about was the difference between women in cities and the majority of women in india right i think most of us who are in cities are privileged to be able to get out of it and actually be vocal about it but uh, there is still a large population of it that has not even been exposed to another possibility they don't even know yeah. trust me they don't even know why periods happen they just just happen and that's a so much of taboo and it's just that we need a lot more um, awareness and education yeah yeah and i think i have one last question before we go into the rapid fire sorry i know oh we, we are God. extending <laughs> like it's a handful maybe you give me a new address <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll have to check on Karan Johar's what's the latest hamper, but we'll figure. Oh my God! <laughs> yes. But I think uh, this was one of the things that stood out to me in the session we had in person in Bombay, where you talked about the importance of a guru, right? About having a teacher to learn from, and I think that word is abused a lot these days, either the wrong kind or people believing that you know they don't need a teacher. Uh, what do you think the role of a guru is in today's modern life first of all we have to understand that there is a difference between a guru and a teacher so i am i'm not a guru and i never intend to be one because when you are a guru you have more responsibility okay and uh, uh, as a teacher i can still shrug it off but uh, and i don't but still uh, a guru take up takes up your responsibility completely so let's not talk about being a guru let's talk about the importance of a teacher now in today's world if you see there is so much of information floating around so much of it right the teacher can help you filter it the right teacher can help you filter it the right teacher no matter how harsh it is will tell you where you stand and will give you the right advice okay but when you do it on your own see you need a teacher even if you want to practice yoga on your own how will you you will pick up a book right that book becomes your teacher so why not to choose a teacher who is more um, i would say present with you physically right rather than a book because you will read something then according to your own understanding you will perceive something else and this practice is not like any other practice that you just go start walking and you're done and you just start following a fitness routine and you're done no this is a different practice it can also uh, give you a lot of um, uh, bad effects it can harm you if it's not done the right way for an example you are a person who has insomnia okay and you are uh, maybe say you are just watching some baba ji on 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 tv or some teacher on tv and you start practicing bhatrika and kapal bhati every day a lot like thousands of it and practicing you will never be able to cure your insomnia getting it so the right teacher will tell you what is the right practice for you it is not only about the alignment and the posture guidelines and the technical part of it that is very important okay maybe say you have lordosis which is a spine issue and you don't on and uh, after having lordosis you are doing the practices which can increase it then what will you do so i think um not only in today today's world even in the ancient times it was very important to have a guru because the guru will look at your body will look at your mind how you function and then give you the practice because he knows it better than you because he has studied it experienced it taught it to so many people okay so uh, i would say even if like now i say i i see it on instagram a lot of bios say that i'm a self taught yoga practitioner i'm like this is such an egoistic phrase how can you be a self taught see if you haven't gone to a physical teacher you have you have gone to some reference some book some uh, text some pictures some youtube video so you have taken it from somewhere so you have had a teacher somewhere it is such an egoistic line to say i am self taught uh, yoga practitioner it is my self journey how can it be it is not because somebody else created it by not even created even patanjali did not create yoga by the way 
Patanjali compiled yoga because it was scattered in so many Upanishads and so many texts and Vedas. So he compiled everything and he put it in one place and he gave it to you like on a platter that I put it, I put everything together. Now you use it. And there's an answer to everything you have, every question in Patanjali Yoga Sutra. So somebody has already done that work. So you can't say that I'm a self-taught yoga practitioner. You are not, first of all. So if you even, if you anyways have a teacher through maybe say a YouTube video or a book, then why not to go to a teacher who has better knowledge? And according to your life, your mind, your body, that person can guide you better. So it's important to have a teacher to filter so much of information for you. Right? Absolutely. That's why I said I remember you were there and I remember because I say it in every workshop that whenever you want to practice yoga, please go to a good teacher. Don't learn it from a book. See, we read books because we have already gone through that process. Yeah. So we know what is written in this book and we can assimilate it better. But if you're a newbie, I would say, please find an offline class if you can yes if you're in a remote area like we have a lot of students one is from jammu one is from up one is from here one is from there they don't have any any class near them so they come for our online classes at least something mm -hmm. some teacher who can help you so always go to a teacher and i heard you i have found an offline yoga teacher yeah. here <laughs> Nice. I'm, I'm, and Mesut, you will get a lot of teachers. Uh, yeah. I'll message you and tell you about another teacher. I don't know whether you've gone to him or somebody else. But sure. he is a teacher there. Yes. Sure. Look forward to that. And when it comes to Guru, uh, we can't even in today's time, I don't think there are many Gurus available because um, Guru is different, you know. Guru is so selfless that Guru doesn't even think about telling you something so harshly on your face because Guru knows this is good for you. So Guru is not even scared about being judged. No. Guru takes up your responsibility so much. You know, uh, Guru will tell you this is right, this is wrong and will show you the path completely. Right? A teacher can still leave your hand. Guru will never leave your hand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the thing. Beautifully said. <laughs> so much heaviness. But I know. I'm really, I'm really glad. Such, you know, the topic is such. What to yeah, do? It's very we profound. I even understood the, the, the vastness of the practice. We haven't. We are not even ready to do that. I'm like, we have an ocean, you know, in front of us. Vishal Samudra. Yeah. Right? That is yoga. Yeah. Okay. And we are taking only a drop out of it and using it and saying, oh, I practice yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and getting so much out of it just with that one drop. And still getting so much out of it. Yes. And still getting so much out of it. Yeah. I just feel that uh, uh, in our schools, not forcefully, but uh, smartly, this practice should be integrated. Absolutely. Yoga Sutra should be integrated. Uh, Yama Niyama should be integrated. And uh, because in today's world, uh, the next generation is beautiful. I love them. I love them for the knowledge of technology and their smartness and everything. But they're still quite lost. Yeah. Some of them, some of them are really sharp. So I think to strike a balance out there, it's nice to integrate it in their studies. Absolutely. Like, you know, they don't have to go through the rock bottom we've all gone through to go back and find and ourselves. Not that, even, uh, not in that, even Ayurveda. Why? Because when we're studying Ayurveda, I, I and Ashish, you know, my husband, we discuss at times that we wish we knew about this when we were growing up. Yeah. But, but, but I know we wouldn't have respected it at that time. So I think after a certain age, uh, people should really kind of um, take an initiative to learn these things because when you study about something like oh i didn't know this and i was following it wrong so it really gives you a lot of insight into a human life absolutely that really helps yeah That's beautiful it. beautiful so i'm going to just take like another five or ten minutes of yours and we're going to do like a quick <laughs> rapid fire round we don't let any of our guests go out without that so are you ready yes Okay, 
So quick warm up oh, questions. <laughs> Are you a morning person or a night person? Uh, morning, absolute morning. Okay. Punctual or always behind schedule? These are these are like shooting answers, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Punctual or always behind schedule? Punctual. Hmm. Okay. Books. Mostly punctual, yeah. Okay. Books, podcasts, or videos? What do you like to consume? Oh my god. Uh, videos, mm-hmm. books, podcast. Oh, interesting order. Okay. And okay, I I know you will not like this question, but favorite asana. Uh, Adho Mukha Shonasana. Hmm. Okay. Uh, which is downward facing dog. Most favorite. Most favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and i i love the entire yoga practice but if you if you tell me that's my sthiram sukham asana i can be in that forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's like we always have one of those okay yeah. <laughs> top 3 books if you had to recommend that really transform top your life top 3 books um, i would say um illustrated light on yoga by bk sayanga um i would say hatha yoga pratipika by bihar school of yoga and um third book another book by bk sayangar uh, only which is the yoga therapy book by bk sayangar now these are the asana related uh, only hatha yoga pradipika is the theory book but you were asking for the yoga books right no it can be so general are... whatever your life whatever transformed your life or uh, what transformed my life really is the monk who sold his ferrari uh, that book i highly recommend that book even though uh that book i i sometimes find it little fictional but, but i think it is little fictional but uh, it can really inspire you so that one book really really helped me and uh, um books by bk sayangar i would say any book by bk sayangar is a great 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 book lovely for yoga practitioners and teachers yeah um uh, any role models that you have what kind of qualities do you admire in them i think i have lots okay so um i think i really i have only studied so much about bk sayangar sir's life and i was never interested in ayanga yoga in the beginning of my yoga practice i always used to find it very stupid to work with props but when i started working with the props when i had my first encounter with a restorative yoga ayanga yoga class with my teacher and i was like this is what i want to do and study so because i younger sir the way he created something so amazing so amazing uh and the qualities which i really like in a teacher or a person or my idol would be so i don't have any idol as specifically but some people yes and nowadays i would say that i really admire my husband not because he's my husband but because of the kind of qualities he has i really like people to be understanding okay and uh, considerate i i don't like people when they i can't say i don't like but i don't admire uh, when people are too rigid about a certain thing you know when they start judging people and putting people into a spot and this is the only way to be well when they are very understanding and considerate towards other people when they are humble uh, polite and uh, when they have humility uh, when they have kindness when i see kindness around in people when i see that people have a heart towards others so mm-hmm. these are the qualities i admire in people and uh, all of these are in ashish so i really admire i i don't know i keep telling him every single day that i haven't seen a heart like yours so open and so welcoming and so you know ready to learn and ready to explore and still very kind and understanding people that is i think a heart which is very human wow so beautiful i like i like, I like human humanity hmm. beautiful if you had to are there any any non negotiables in your daily routine mm, non negotiables uh, of course the practice okay uh, there are a lot of things <laughs> practice sleep sleep mm-hmm. uh, 
be on time i we don't like to be up till late okay and uh, the food which mm-hmm. has to be wholesome and profound and when you when you talk about the yoga practice then the uh, the asana practice of course what we do the non negotiable is actually the spine release mm-hmm. i would say it just struck me that what we actually do without fail Hmm. it is the spine release it has to happen whether i take a class whether i'm doing my own practice because i feel that this is one of the most important thing wow <laughs> <laughs> and light <lighten> me <laughs> yeah <laughs> because spine is yogis figured it out that spine is the most essential part of the body it has to be taken care of so the spine yes properly one expectation you have from students who come to learn from you there are no expectations <laughs> no, they will um, i learned it in the very beginning of my uh, initially i used to be really disturbed uh, because you don't know a lot of things and then with time you learn so i think no expectation uh, i don't expect anything from them as such but i would really want people for their own well being i would like them to be a little more consistent mm-hmm. yeah see why i don't want to have an expectation because i don't want to hurt myself every single day that's simple your life your body you do it you get results you don't do it you don't get results that's simple so i've detached myself from my students that ways earlier i used to be really attached to them but um, the only thing i would want them to do is consistency nothing else. Beautiful. That's all right. I think one last question that I have in the rapid fire is, um, what would your advice be to any seeker who's probably just starting out their journey? Just get on the mat and do it. <laughs> Enjoy <laughs> the process. Nothing else. Don't expect anything. Right. Just have fun with it and uh, start with asan practice. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. You don't have to become the master of the yoga practice in one day. You don't have to study yoga sutras. You don't have to study theory. but uh, always try to um, learn from a good teacher who is not giving you promises to do this way or to look a certain way or to or to make you do this asana or that asana don't run after asana headstand don't run after asana don't run after the fact that you will be enlightened one day you might not be and also remember that you'll make mistakes sometimes you'll not go for your yoga class just practice <laughs> just remember this practice is going to work for you simple beautiful thank you thank you so much rakhi i know we extended by a few minutes and <laughs> thank you for bearing with the electricity power going out uh, really really glad to have you here your energy your presence and just your honest sharing i think uh, mm-hmm. i found it really insightful and i'm sure the listeners do as well so thank you thank you so much for being here thank you so much for doing this and i know that we had to we did back and forth and i am not available a lot of times on whatsapp it's ashish who you deal with because i don't uh, indulge in a lot of technology and all thank you so much for being so patient thank you <laughs> you were being very patient and i'm glad that we did it because this conversation was very 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 profound very insightful thank Likewise. you so much for coming up with such amazing questions thank you Let thank you Thank you. It's Love my you. pleasure to be here actually.